Bay Whiskey traffic, 2 o'clock, 8 miles westbound. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators and welcome back to the Finer Points. In this video, I'm going to react to a student pilot who inadvertently spins while out practicing power on stalls. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys how this happened, um, how to avoid it, and then give you some tips and tricks that you can work on with your CFI uh, to make sure that this never ever happens to you. And this is super important, not just because loss of control is the leading cause of fatal aircraft accidents, uh, but there's just so many students I meet or pilots I meet that are uncomfortable with power on stalls uh, and you really don't have to be if you know what to do. So let's check it out and see what happens and we'll dive in. It's kind of hard to see but what we have here is a student pilot who's practicing power on stalls in a Cessna 152. Uh, the cameras are mounted low and they're really far back so it's hard to see so I'll, I'll help narrate. Now in this first attempt, you can see that he's using aileron to prevent the airplane from rolling right. When the stall breaks, the airplane banks hard to the right, but he does not spin. And that's because the engine, the left pull of the engine has saved him. All right, let's review how spins occur. Okay, so for a spin to occur, you have to have a stall and a yawing moment, right? The airplane has to be yawing. Um, if you don't have a stall or if you don't have a yaw, you can't spin the airplane. So what will happen to student pilots in power on stalls is as they pitch up, the nose is very, very high. So you sort of lose all your references. You're kind of looking up at this blue sky. You don't know where to look. And the engine is pulling you left. So you have to be holding right rudder and just the just the proper amount of right rudder to prevent that yaw from happening. Because if you don't, when the stall occurs, the airplane will break hard toward the direction it was yawing. Now that's called the incipient phase. There is still a chance to recover from here, but if you use aileron to try to pick up this low wing, you actually increase the drag on that wing and can cause the airplane to go into a deeper spin, which is when you have one wing more stalled than the other wing, and the wing that's less stalled is sort of flying a helical path with a very nose low attitude, low airspeed, uh, and, a, and a large rate of descent, okay? So that's a spin. The recovery for the spin is to get the power out of there right away because that's what's pulling you left. Neutralize your ailerons so you don't have any drag and use rudder to stop the rotation. Elevator forward to break the stall and then recover from that dive. Okay, so when you're doing the stalls, it's really important that you can see the yaw, particularly in power on stalls because that's when you have the engine power pulling you left. All right, so you have to have a, a visual reference, and that's why we teach the Lindbergh reference, which is the golden reference in all airplanes for determining pitch, yaw, and roll when you can't see the horizon in front of the airplane. Now, here we're looking at a Cessna 152, so, uh, you know, if, if the camera were mounted higher, you'd see what I'm saying, but if this student were to sit back in his seat, he would likely be able to see the horizon here somewhere along the, the side window, just forward on the side window. He doesn't have a good visual reference, so let's watch what happens. Take our speed. Number five, eight whiskey traffic, two o'clock, eight miles westbound. Oh, four. Level at four thousand five. Five eight whiskey looking. Number one seven off the traffic, nine o'clock. All right, he has pretty good spin recovery technique, but let's back that up a little bit. I want to show you guys that right here, when the airplane banks to the left, stop it right here, if he were to pull the power out, put in rudder instead of aileron, and release the yoke so that the airplane can come out of that stall, it would simply fly out of this condition in a bank, right? But instead, he goes for the large aileron input, uh, continues to hold the pro spin inputs, and the airplane goes into a two-turn spin. So let's talk about um, if you're a student, how you can deal with this. And if you're an instructor, here's some tips for how you can deal with your students. Um, this is how I teach spin training. I mean, the first thing is I demonstrate a fully developed spin like we see in this video. Um, and either I'll do it, 
uh, in an aerobatic airplane or I'll send my students to an aerobatic instructor. If you're a student and your CFI does not want to do the spins with you, that's okay. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but find a CFI for one or two lessons that will take you out and show you a full spin. Now, we're not doing aerobatic training, so you don't have to get really good at this. I mean, if if you're a CFI, just have show, show your student one time and then have them maybe follow along on the recovery with the controls a second time. The main thing we're trying to teach here is how to prevent this from happening. So after the demonstration is done, that's when we roll up our sleeves and go to work. And I go back to the training airplane that we're working in, whether it's a 152 or a 172, and I'll start by doing power on stalls pretending that I forgot what the rudder is. And the students are flying this, by the way. So I say when I'm doing it, I'm doing it with my students. They'll put their feet flat on the floor. They'll pitch the nose of the airplane up and add full power. And we all know from what I just said, what's happening, the airplane, the nose is yawing left, yawing left, yawing left. And when it breaks, it will break into an incipient spin with the left wing really low. And I want my students to identify in the Lindbergh reference what's happening. There it's yawing, it's yawing, it's yawing. There's the break. And then I want them to stop it from spinning. So experience the incipient spin, but don't let it wrap up into that two-turn spin. That's rotation speed. We add power. We pitch up. Oh boy, we forgot to use the rudder. Okay, there goes the brake and the roll. Power comes out. Rudder stops the rotation. Elevator breaks the stall. The lift goes back into space, and we pull out of the dive. Once my students can do that, we, we try to tighten it up one notch more. We look very carefully at the Lindbergh reference. Sometimes we'll get a dry erase marker to put a little mark there so we can more easily see the yaw effect uh, in that area. And then we try some power on stalls where I know now that they're looking in the right spot and they can use the proper amount of rudder to prevent the airplane from going into any kind of spin, incipient or fully developed. So that's what I recommend and that's how I would teach my students. If you're a student, make sure you're getting this proper training by asking your CFI to either do it with you or send you to an aerobatic instructor for a lesson or two, that's perfectly fine. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode. A huge thanks to the sponsors. Remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. Also, a huge thanks to the patrons. Without that support, these videos just wouldn't be possible. If you're looking for bonus content and you'd like to support the channel, visit patreon.com slash learn TFP. If you don't want to accidentally stall and spin your airplane, definitely get our ground school app and take the free trial. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that little alert bell so you get notified of uploads. But most importantly, until next time, be safe and fly your best. <laughs>